could put Nilo in a vape team. Is it good? Well, it's on par with Tartaglia, so like, who cares? When you're early on into Genshin, Venti is one of the weakest characters that you can build. Boost your, your damage of your other teams so that you can be super lazy. But as a C0 DPS, Kazuo is probably the best. Is she broken? No. Is she good for meta? No. Is she good for new teams? Maybe. Low talent, low level official, or any kind of official is going to be way worse than a C0 cookie. Hello there, Flip here, and today we'll be doing another Genshin Court starting off basically Season 2 of this series. I went and rewatched all my previous Genshin Courts as well as looking through all the comments to get all the feedback I felt was necessary to try and make this series the best it can possibly be. So hopefully that's somewhat apparent here. And for those of you who don't know what the Genshin Court is or what it entails, the TLDR of it is that I'll be trialing certain Genshin content creators based on their takes on certain characters, filed as evidence from their Twitch clips or YouTube videos, and giving them a sentence accordingly depending on the severity. And the one who's going to be trialed today is going to be... Huh? Wait, sorry, he escaped his cell? <coughs> Change of plans, the one we will be trialing today is the most dangerous man in the Genshin community for a second time, Sekapoko. But before we do that, as always, if at any point during the video you're entertained or informed, make sure to drop a like and even consider subscribing as I talk on various topics regarding Genshin's meta and I'll try to keep you updated. And it looks like Seka has been caught, he was out in the back guzzling on Yoimiya's bandages. Interpret that as you will. And wow, we have also already gathered enough evidence for a second trial. One of the problems about Sekka is that as his discord would entail, he feels the need to validate his waifu through all hell and back whenever the community seems to think negatively of them, which often ends up in him being contrarian for no real reason, which breeds possibly the best Genshin clip of all time. Here's the problem with fucking Ayaka and Ganyu, right? Kaya is better, okay? Straight up. Kaya is better all the time, unless you're going like C6, R5, and Constellation route. It's so annoying that Kaya is better. <coughs> Anyways, let's look over the first piece of evidence, which Seka, he actually explains the clip I just showed, so here we are. When you run around with a C6 Kaya, You'll get more burst damage on Ayaka, but your valley damage falls way down, and then like the rotations can be weird. It really just depends on the fight. If you ha it can cluster all the enemies into a ball in front of you, Ayaka's way better. If the enemies are spread out, Ayaka's nowhere near as good as Kaya, because Kaya's mobility allows him to like get the enemies like that are farther reaching or whatever. He hasn't changed. Okay, so the problem with this reasoning, because it's not incorrect, I guess, but very disingenuous, is that on Ayaka teams, you're just going to be running a grouper, and especially with Freeze, you should have no problems keeping enemies in Ayaka's burst. So using a team issue that can easily be circumvented to then try and compare these characters is kind of just wrong. And I really still don't get why he's hardlining Kaya as a carry in competition with Ayaka, when he can just note a lot of Kaya's good points without trying to shit on Ayaka. Kaya is a great cryo battery with a movable burst so he's strong in multi-wave content while having good cryo application and decent off-field damage that can actually help to support Ayaka while also having the tightest ass in the game which all should be good enough reason to want to build him without making a bad comparison to demerit Ayaka and then single target it's like 50-50 between the two yeah he just pulled that out of his ass I've actually seen a lot of people try to argue the opposite and that Ayaka is better in AoE than single target generally, but the thing is, assuming you're not using Shenha, Ayaka's damage scales completely linearly. If Ayaka's burst does 100 damage to one enemy, if you add more enemies it will always end up doing 100 damage to all of them individually. And you know what, why not? I actually went through and found Kaya's high single target team currently on GC Sim, which is a Genshin team DPS simulator, and within Kitching Mains it was a reverse melt Kaya team. And then I compared it to an all 4 star Ayaka team at the same investment and... Yeah, this is not 50-50. And I don't really know why Seka can't just say Kaya is a really good cryo character independent of his comparison to Ayaka. I also don't know what possible test Seka could have done to come to his conclusion of Kaya and Ayaka being equal in output. The only thing I can really think of is that Kaya was getting carried by a lot of off-field damage dealers and Seka just chalked up to it being Kaya's damage. Or he just 
didn't give Aiko artifacts. Either way, you cannot possibly convince me that there is anyone that genuinely believes that Kaya and Aika's outputs are remotely close, which brings me to my first point of Seka just spouting out takes for the sake of being a contrarian, or to elicit a reaction. There is an unofficial Seka Clips channel and this generates quite a bit of views just because of the outlandish, heinous things that comes out of his mouth. If Seka was just trying to bait views, I, I wouldn't be surprised. But yes, that will conclude this piece of evidence. Normally I would give a punishment and add to his sentence for what the fuck I had to put my ears through, but because this is essentially repeated evidence from his first court, I will be lenient and not follow up with any repercussions. Now we have our next piece of evidence taken from Seka's tier list and... You know what, I think we might have actually topped the Kaya is better than Ganyu and I could take with this one. Klee's major flaw is when using Klee, she requires lots of buffs, but she maximizes her whole kit when she gets lots of buffs. That's her big weakness. So basically, literally every character in the game, a character will do a lot of damage when given multiple different stats. I just couldn't wrap my head around that. Even if a character can do a lot of damage with a lot of different buffs, that doesn't really determine what teams they will go on. If you were to play Bennett, Klee, Sucrose, and Zheng Cho to maximize Klee's charge attack damage, sure, she may do a high vape number, but that would not be her best team due to her issues with vaping. Her biggest weakness is stats without any stat transfers whatsoever. Um, in essence, what's really funny is Klee is actually the original Raiden Shogun. Klee is the original Raiden Shogun? So <laughs> What what do I even say here? Let's start with what he said about stat transfers. With Klee, on all her relevant teams, which if I were to list would be Mono Pyro, Overload, and maybe Reverse Melt Enabler. On those teams, Klee doesn't heavily want to focus on stats other than attack, crit, and also energy recharge to an extent. Just look at her. Does this look like a complicated character to- oh wait. Klee doesn't really need EM in any of her teams, even if you were to use Vape Klee, which I would heavily not recommend, as Klee doesn't vape a lot on this team, due to applying so much pyro. Which is again the same reason why she doesn't build EM actually, it's because she applies too much pyro even on her vape team, to where building EM on her is recommended. Also what? Her biggest weakness is stats without any stat transfers whatsoever. Stat transfers to Raiden? The most notable Raiden buffers for her crit build are Bennett, Kazaha, and Sera, in which they all just transfer attack or damage percent. Raiden does scale with a lot of stats, but she doesn't really need anyone to give her a stat like energy recharge. I'm sorry, Electro main character. That will conclude the second piece of evidence. Sekka really hasn't changed one bit. Just take a life sentence at this point. No parole, no hearing, no chance for redemption. You are evicted from the right to ever talk about a character ever again. Jinjing Santuner didn't leave the community for this. And now pushing through with our third piece of evidence, we're retracting back to Sekka's simping tendencies. A while ago when everyone was calling Kuki bad on release, Sekka was defending her like his life was on the line. So much so that it caused him to say this. So in conclusion, my C1 Fischl is not worth putting Reese's into if I have C0 Kuki, right? Yeah, C6 Fischl is the only thing that can even be remotely better than C0 Kuki. That's the only thing that can even be considered better. Like, when you have low talent Fischl, she's just way worse than Kuki. Fischl was constantly compared to Kuki, so in order for Kuki to be good, Fischl has to be discredited, despite the fact that she's one of the best units in the game. But enough rambling, let's look over what he says. fit her in any team actually that's not true okay that exact fact is why you actually assume you can fit her in every team but you can't okay official you could fit in any team but there's actually a major problem can, can you get to the point already um, official becomes the sub dps character in that team composition also what do you mean what do you mean by this now is official better than any other team well she's okay in a lot of different teams but she's definitely not the ideal choice Okay, so she can fit in a lot of teams, but she's never the ideal choice. <sighs> if Fischl isn't the best in the slot for a team, most of the time she's going to be a top 3 option, or a recommended option if you just don't have enough characters. 
If you wanted to mention the fact that Fischl is restrictive, just mention Cryo. Fischl is kind of just bad for Cryo damage dealers. I wish an example was given of what teams or characters in particular he thinks Fischl isn't ideal for, because that's actually quite rare. And she was overall the ideal choice in a fictitious situation for aggravate teams if you had a five person team. Four person team, not so much. If you remove Fischl from an aggravate team, your team damage falls off a cliff, ignites on fire and dies. Aggravate allows you to constantly just add damage to all your hits that apply Electro, and Fischl's Ascension 4 has no internal cooldown, meaning that this can proc very frequently. In single target, Fischl almost always contributes the most DPS to an Aggravate team, and the second Electro is basically just there to help Fischl proc Aggravate. Case and point Kaching. Kaching's damage without Aggravate is... But since she can actually proc a lot of Aggravates, which helps Fischl in turn also Aggravate, she's the preferred option there. Why can't you bring an animal character? Because then you lack a healer. Think about it. If you lack a healer, is your team efficient and good and consistent and strong and comparable to other teams? No, because you're using a team that is a full send damaging team with no protection. And if you're running out of there, eventually you run out of steam and die. That depends. The thing about Dendro is right now there are no Dendro healers. So most teams are very awkward, but that is an official problem. That is just a Dendro problem now. There are very few Dendro teams that can afford to bring a healer unless it's someone like Kokomi for the blue archetype. And if you wanted to bring an Onimu healer like Jin or Sayu, Seka actually being correct for once does point out the fact that they don't really boost damage. Dendro healer might be the answer. That was the question, right? Would Dendro healers be the answer? But in a situation, right? So a lot of people are trying to make Fischl the sub DPS. What if there was a different sub DPS that wasn't Fischl and it was Nahida? Okay. You could also just run both of them together. You don't need to sacrifice one or the other. You can have multiple off-field damage dealers. That is how a majority of teams are built. Do you have a brain just for display? And actually, here is a genius idea. If you want to play an aggravate team and also want the comfort of a healer, since Fischl is the majority of the team's damage anyways, a team like Fischl, Dentro, Kuki, and an Onimo does actually work quite well. He has quite literally run this team before. Why not just react with Nahida and an Electro character and then just use Kuki on the team, right? Why try to overcomplicate what's already in front of you because you didn't build Kuki, because you didn't have the resources, because you spent them all on some random other character like, you know, uh, what's his name? God, what did I spend my resources on that I told everyone, don't fucking spend your resources on this character so you have resources for another fucking character that will come out very soon that is probably way better for you. Oh wait, it was fucking Hazel, you dumbasses! Who are you talking to right now? I am struggling to keep my composure, but that will be the third piece of evidence concluded. Seka has already been given a life sentence. I don't think he can go much up from there. But for the excessive simpid symptoms you are exuding, you will now have to write a handwritten apology for dissing my strongest character. Also, previously I gave you ownership of the entire circus in your name, but that clearly is not enough. You now have to don the clown face paint and makeup wherever you go as a permanent reminder. We have two more pieces of evidence to get through to finalize the life sentence. Does anyone in the jury disagree? Alright, thank you. Let's carry on. So Fred's asking why Shenhao's over Shen Li, because Shenhao's broken, she's one of the few characters in the game that boost damage. I really hope he means damage bonus. I will give him the extreme benefit of the da damage boost is bigger than Bennett's damage boost or Kazuo's damage boost by a lot. Never mind. Even though he is exaggerating how big the gap is, he does know that Shenhao's damage boost is only to 5 cryo hits. And when you do boost damage, it boosts on every single cryo character in the team, not just one. So if you're running double cryo, it's only one character. If you're running multiple cryo characters, like three cryo characters, it's even bigger than that, so it's double that. And she also boosts her own damage too, so... <sighs> People forget that Shenha boosts Shenha. No one forgets that. It's just that I'd rather boost my crowned Miss Splitter highly invested Aika over my Shenha, who isn't even built as crit. But if you can triple the damage of the next character, it's pretty big. Especially if one hit kills everything. Case in point is Melt Ganyu. You don't run Shenha on Melt Ganyu. I think in that situation it's only a double damage boost, but like if you're doubling the damage, that's bigger than what you get out of fucking Kazuha, right? You don't run Kazuha on Melt Ganyu either. The crazy thing about Shenha, right? If you're using Shenha, Kazuha, Bennett, right? All three stack. 
that's the crazy thing about the team, right? All three characters stack. That's wonderful and all, but you wouldn't use all three together on Melt Gun Yu. Shen has energy requirement is way too high on top of the fact that you will mess up your melts. For Kazaha, the rotation to Sprawl Cryo on Melt Gun Yu is horrible. You have to literally time your Gun Yu Flower to go off in tandem with Kazaha's burst to Sprawl Cryo on top of not having Pyro on the enemy, so you have to intentionally miss Bennett's burst. And to top it off, Kazaha's energy needs are also Dudu Duki dog shit on this team as well. Gun Yu's best melt team is with Bennett, Zhangling, and Zhongli. Melt Gun Yu needs a shielder, otherwise, there are too many variables that can mess you up. And you know, you cannot run a shielder and be a god, but eventually everyone gets fed up and runs a shielder. Is your team consistent, as strong, and comparable to other teams without a shielder? No. And that is the fourth piece of evidence done. I now remember why I don't like making more than three segments. I'm never doing this again, but we move. And now we can close out Sekka's court once and for all, ending it with him coping about Kuki once again for our final piece of evidence. That's the official over there, and we're dropping the, the Kazuo here, and then we're just gonna walk over, and then that, that's it, that's, that's over, okay. 50k in the Nahidas, just mad lad boosting the entire team. So, based on that assessment, the fact that you can one phase, because Kuki can create more reactions that allow official A4 to work, I would argue that's S tier. What? That is your benchmark for S tier? Kaching is an A tier and she does it better than Kuki. And if your benchmark is the character just needs to proc A4 official a lot, put every Electro character in S tier, except Sarah. Arguably, surprisingly though, for the official, if you took official out and ran any other character, same shit. You, you quite literally said in your reasoning for Kuki being in S tier, and why the team was working so well is that Fischl A4 is getting triggered a lot. Fischl and Nahida was the majority of the team's damage. Kuki is not a core unit to aggravate teams. Fischl is. Aggravate works well because of its synergy with Fischl's Ascension 4, not because Kuki provides anything to the team without Fischl. Also, what other Electro character would you use? The right, any other Electro character. And other Electro characters actually work better. Yay Miko works better, and Cena works better. <laughs> Surprisingly, Fischl was not the key thing there. It's actually Ye Miko and Fischl will do the same. And Kuki's the key component, which is super weird. Yeah, it's weird because it's not fucking true. Even your own instincts disagree with you. You know what? No more. Life sentence. All the jury's in favor. Court is now closed. Anyways, that's going to be all for the start of Season 2 of the Genshin Court. I only plan to have Sekka be the only repeat just because it's Sekka. And I already have plans for new content creators to look towards. Sekka is basically just the same as always, being a contrarian for the sake of it and misleading his viewers constantly and shutting down discussions about his takes. As well as the egregious simping. And on that note, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment what you think about Sekka, as I'd love to hear your thoughts and I respond to almost every single comment. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Peace.